Welcome to part 6 of the Intermediate Revit course. We're going to create a parametric family. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 4 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. Alright, so what I want to do now is create a custom table because if we have a look at this table that we've added in here, we'll have a look in a 3D view, it's not exactly the same as this table we've got here. Now usually I wouldn't be fussed about this, but for the sake of doing a really nice render of this interior space, I'm going to want to create a custom parametric family that we'll be able to use upstairs as well, not just for this space here. So to create this table, we're going to have to go to Revit and create a new family. To do that, we're going to go to File, New, Family. And we're going to have a look through here and we're going to choose the correct family template because that's going to be really important. This is the initial setup. So you want to go to the English, if you're speaking in English, and we want to use the metric furniture family template. So I'm going to open up this family template and you can see that it's currently pretty blank, but there are these two reference planes. So when you're creating a family, the interface is a little bit different to creating a project. It's not that much difference, but there are a few extra tools or different tools. So you can see there is a now a create tab, and this is where you can create the actual 3D part of your model. Before we get into this, what we're going to want to do is start off by creating some reference planes that we can constrain to. Because this is going to be parametric and we're going to be able to change the values of the length of the table and the height of the table and the width of the table and the width of the legs and the and so forth, we're going to want to set all of that up first before we start creating the extrusions. So I can go up to the top here and go reference plane or I can press RP to bring up reference planes. I'm just going to go ahead and create the overall shape of the tabletop. We're going to place in four lines here. Doesn't really matter where they go. But what this is going to allow us to do is to create the table from these reference planes. With these now in place, we can use the dimension tool. And you can do that by pressing up here or by pressing DI. We're going to click on this first reference plane to the middle, to the last one. And you can see that there are some values here, but we're going to want to make these equal. Now, next, we're going to want to do the same thing, but coming across from the top down to the bottom. Again, we're going to make these equal. And finally, we're going to make one more, which is the full span of this. And this is going to be our parameter. So if we create another one from the top to the bottom, what we're doing is setting up the dimensions. Click on this dimension line for the length of the table and we're going to make this a parameter and we can do that by going up to the label dimension part up the top here and click on create parameter so we're going to call this length this is setting up a parameter so that when you're editing something in the actual revit project you're going to be able to change the length of it from this edit type menu the table is going to be completely parametric and you can change the length and the width and the height of it by creating that parameter, you can now see that the length is 2,883. That can stay as that random number for now. Let's go ahead and click on this dimension line, which is constrained to these reference planes. And then let's create another parameter and call this width because we're currently in a plan view. You've got the width by the length. Click OK for that one. The width is 2,303. And now if we go into the family types, this is where you can see these parameters. So this is what you'll see when you click on edit type in the actual project. You can change the length if we were to make this 2000 and we were to change the width to 1200 and we apply that, you can see that that has changed those parameters, which is really cool because we can make that whatever we want. We're also going to want to assign a height to this table. All families with this template have the actual 3D views. They've got floor plans and they've got elevations. So we can go to the front elevation. And we're going to create another reference plane. And we're going to place this anywhere. We've got this temporary dimension. We can click on this temporary dimension and make it permanent. And we can drag this out. So now if we select this parameter, we can click on create parameter again, and we can call this one height. Click OK. And now we've got a height parameter. But what we're also going to want to do while we're here is click on this reference plane. And we're going to name the plane to be, let's call it tabletop. So now once we've got that front view set up, we can go back to the reference uh, level, the floor plan, and we can create this extrusion of the tabletop. So if we click on extrusion up in the create tab, 
we can use the rectangle tool and we can just select the actual reference planes. You want to make sure you select the reference planes and nothing else. We're going to just draw out this extrusion. You might be wondering what level is it actually going on? Where is this going to be placed? And there is no level option under the constraints. But what we can do is set a, re a work plane or a reference plane. So we can specify a new work plane by using this work plane tool. And we can make this that tabletop reference plane we just created in the height view. So you can click OK. And now this tabletop is going to be placed on that reference plane. So that would be this level here. But then we also need to give it an extrusion depth. And at the moment you can see it's extruding 250 mils, which would actually be extruding it up from this reference plane. We want to make it about 50 millimeters below that. So I'm going to press, I'm going to type in negative 50, click the green tick. The tabletop is 50 millimeters below that work plane, that reference plane. And it is also sitting on that. Now you can see that if we were to change the height of this by going up to family types and we change this to, let's say 800 and apply that, it's going to move that whole work top, that bench top. So now we also need to add some legs for it. If we go back to the reference level and add in some more reference planes, we can press RP. We're going to just create a few reference planes on the inside of this extrusion. Doesn't matter where they are again, but if we now use the dimension tool by pressing DI and we click on the actual reference planes, make sure you're not, you're not selecting the extrusion, but the actual reference planes, we can create some temporary dimensions or some permanent di dimensions, I should say for these actual table legs. And we only need four of them. You can see there's one, two, three, four. So let's select all four of them. And we're going to make this a parameter. So if we click create pr parameter and we call this legs, click OK. You can see that they are now all constrained to this parameter. That makes them all the same value. So they're all 71. If we want to change this, let's say we wanted them to be 50 mils, we can go up to family types and click 50 mils for the legs and that's going to change all of those reference planes. So now obviously we need to actually add in some legs. We can go to create, extrusion, rectangle tool. And we also again want to make sure we're selecting these reference planes and we're just going to create a rectangle there and make sure we lock all of these to the reference planes. All of these extrusion lines get locked to the reference planes. So we're going to do that again on this side and we're going to do this for all four of the legs and we're just going to make sure we lock all of these parameters. There should be four for each leg. And finally, the last one, we're just going to lock all four of these. There we go. And at the moment, you can see that they are extruding the same height as the actual tabletop. But that's fine if we go to the front view and we drag this down. The, these are the legs here. We snap it to the actual reference level on the ground and we lock that in. We're also going to drag down the top of them to snap onto the bottom of the table and we're going to lock that as well. So now you can see those extra extrusion values have changed. We've got our legs in. Now let's give this a test and we'll go to family types and see if these parameters change when we change these values. So if we click apply, you can see that those legs have moved with the table dimensions, which is what we want. That's really good. If we make this 1800, we can see that again that's all moving with the parameters, which is really good. And that's because we're constraining them and we're locking them to the reference planes. That wouldn't be possible without the actual reference planes. So if we go to a 3D view, we can see what our table looks like currently. And it looks pretty good. We're going to want to make sure these connections are joined up a bit better. So we can click on the join tool and we're going to select the tabletop and the legs to join them. That looks much better. So the next thing we're going to want to do is add in this little footrest thing that wraps around the sides of the table. What we're going to do is create a, another extrusion that is 50 millimeters offset from that table top or from the legs, I guess you could say, because as you can see that this footrest is wrapping around the outside of those legs. So let's create another extrusion. And all we need to do is click on the rectangle tool. We want to add in a 50 millimeter offset from this table and th these legs and as you can see that's creating a 50 mil offset now at the moment the extrusion is 50 millimeters as well and i think we might keep that that looks to be about 50 mils at the moment this is 50 millimeters off of the same work plane as the tabletop so we're going to have to create another reference plane if we go to the front view we can tick this and come back to it but we'll go to the front view and we'll create another reference plane 
and we're going to make this about the same height as what it is here but we're going to make this parametric as well let's create a dimension of this reference plane to this reference plane and we're going to create a parameter for that dimension and we can call this footrest height click ok so now if we name this plane we can call this footrest and go back to our reference level we're going to select that footrest that we created before the extrusion and we're going to edit the work plane and we're going to make this that footrest click ok and as you can see if we go to the front view there's our footrest. Let's have a look at this in 3D. Not quite what we were looking for. So we're gonna to have to edit this again. And what we wanna actually do is edit the extrusion and create another rectangle that is on the inside in line with that tabletop. So if we click the finish edit mode, you can see that that's now created that footrest. You can see there's another tabletop kind of bit sitting on top of the legs. So let's add that in here as well. So go back to the reference level, create another extrusion, and we're just gonna draw this to go over that same point to that reference plane there. But the extrusion, we're gonna make this positive 50 instead of negative 50. We're gonna make sure this is on the right reference plane. Click that green tick, have a look at this in 3D. Not quite what we were after, so this is just a matter of playing around with it. I think it's going to be the same offset off of the legs as that footrest. So let's go ahead and edit this again, edit the extrusion. And we're just gonna bring this out and align these points to the footrest like this. And we're gonna click that green tick. So there we go, that looks pretty good. So we gotta make sure that when we change these parameters that some of these new things that we've added are actually going to be applied with that change. And it looks like they are locked on to the same reference planes. They are all parametric and that's really, really good. So let's change that back to 1800 just to see if it changes. We'll make sure that the heights and the widths change. So the width of it, that's parametric, that's really cool. Now let's change the height of it and see if that changes as well. Nice, that's <laughs> pretty cool. If we just change the legs of this to 100, is that gonna make the changes? That's really nice. And then the footrest height as well, if we make that 800, that changes as well. So you can see this is completely parametric. And once we load this into our project, you're gonna be able to change all of these parameters from within the project. The last thing we wanna do, this is currently on the realistic visual mode and you can see that it's got no materials assigned to it. So what we can do is select the tabletop and you can see that there are materials and finishes. What if we wanna change the material top depending on what the object is going to be in the project? So we can actually make the material a parameter as well so that you can change that from within the project. Rather than selecting a material for the object from the family, we're going to associate a family param parameter. So if we select that and we create a new parameter and call this table top material, click OK and we'll click OK again. That is going to be able to be changed from within the project. So now we can do the same thing for the legs. We're going to select associate family parameter, create a new one and call this legs, click OK. And again, we can do that for the footrest. If we click on material, we add a new one, call this footrest, there we go. So now the cool thing is you can use this for any project that you want. You can go file and save this as a family and you can then reuse this family in any project that you want. It's not just limited to the project that you opened it up in. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and save this out and we're gonna put this under project files and call this parametric family. We can save that as a family. But now what we can do is load this into the project. And with that loaded, you can now place in this family wherever you want. And I'm just gonna place it in here. I'll put it next to the table that we've currently got so we know the basic dimensions of it. So I'm just gonna create a selection box from this so we can have a look at it. Spread this out a little bit. And you can see that there are no materials currently assigned to it. You can also see that if we select on here, and we go edit type, you can change these materials from this edit type menu. And you can also change all of those dimensions that we made parameters, which is really, really awesome. So if we wanted the height to be 800 mils, you can see it's parametric, except now that footrest disappears because the footrest height is also 800 mils. So let's make that 400 and you can change the length of it to let's say 1200 and we'll make the width 800. Let's see what that looks like. If we wanna add the tabletop material, we're gonna make this a softwood lumber. Let's go with that and apply that. Let's see if that actually adds it in. There's our material and we can actually change the other materials of this as well. If we change the legs material, let's say we wanted this to be something weird. If we wanted this to be earth for some reason, can click okay. You've now got earth legs. So 
that's the really cool thing. You can change all of the materials from the actual family, from the edit type menu. For us, we're gonna want this to all be this timber. So let's go ahead and go make this all timber. Let's have a look at what we've got, what options we have. I'm gonna go for this glue laminated timber because I think that might look okay. We can change this after if we want, but let's just have a look at what that looks like. We're just gonna go for this wood timber. Let's have a look at this. So change the legs as well and we'll make this that wood. Click apply. Now, if you knew that these were all going to be the same material, you could just change it in the family. But I like the idea of having it all parametric because then you can use this for any project you want, which is awesome. Finally, we've got our table. That looks really good. It's pretty similar to this. We can still change the dimensions of it. Go ahead and put it in the right spot. So we're gonna get rid of this other generic table. We're gonna place our table in there. And what we can do is then have a look at this in 3D. Let's create a selection box of it, spread this out. So here's our table. You can see it's a bit too tall, obviously. That's probably only about 400 mils. So we'll make the height of the footrest 200 mils, and we'll make the height of the actual table 400. You can see that's pretty good. 1200 by 800, probably what it roughly is. In fact, I might make the height of this 500 and make this 250, and I reckon that's pretty damn good. I kinda wanna have a look at what this would look like in an Enscape view as well. So if we start up Enscape, we can see how this would render out, which would be really helpful. All right, so there's our table. You can see that that's turned out not too bad. Obviously, once we render this out, it'll look a lot nicer and we could probably change the materials on it again. Man, I'm struggling to say materials, materials. Yes, we can change the materials on it later, make it look even better. But for now, because that's parametric, we can do whatever we want with it. We can make this into a bar stool. We can make it into a dining table for the kitchen upstairs. And we really have freedom of what this family is. And it didn't take too long to set up. And we can use these principles to create whatever we wanted. We could make a parametric couch. We could make a parametric TV or whatever we want. It's now up to you to create whatever you want because you know how to do it. So next up, we're gonna have a look at some curtain walls because this is something that a lot of people has asked me to do. And I think it's going to be extremely helpful. We're going to do some curtain walls in another project in a studio project of mine. And it's gonna be really cool, so stay tuned. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about massing. We're going to learn all about curtain walls and curved walls by modeling up a curved curtain wall. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.